Bye bye. All right, you're here with KKL 69, like Ben Rudolph and Mark. I have to. Um, I E for intensely entertaining. Hold on. Oh. Um, yep. Yeah. I can't read the computer screen. That doesn't make any sense. We have Venetian blinds here. The little ones, you know, the mini blinds. Did you did your folks have major Venetian blinds? You know, the kind that are they're back in again. 30s, 40s looking things, 50s even. They were made out of metal or and or they're made out of wood. I remember we had them. And there was a place in town, Acme Venetian Blind. They used to sell and service them. I didn't know they broke that often. Huh. This one here is one of those $2 specials out of a discount store. But it does the job. It blocks the sun. I was right on the TV screen, and I couldn't read it. I'm looking for... I know who, who had the Acme Venetian blinds. It was Warren Aiello, the founder of Paz Pizza. Paz Pizza was on and is on 22nd Avenue in the 5600 block. But that was Warren Aiello Sr., and he passed on up. He was the founder of Acme Venetian Blinds on 50th Street. He had a kid, Warren Jr., went to school with him. St. Mary's High School. And he ran a second-hand, let's see, sit, well, wait, that's not right. There was a waterbed place, and like, remember those? They still make those. It was waterbeds, and um, second time around, I think it was called. It sounds like an antique shop, but it wasn't. He made furniture out of that real stiff styrofoam, which I thought was extremely uncomfortable. But that's all right. Who cares? Let's take some more calls. I'll get back to that higher in the air. Hey, Lou. This is Kelly Levin from Rock of Fun Music. The um, Rockers at the Lowry to Burlington. Hey, remember that show we did? That was back in 2008 already. For oh, sure. Did I just hear you talk about an old fact style or cross with your dad? What? what? Say that again. It's hard to hear. Did I just hear you talking about an old-fashioned-style orange cross with your dad? Yeah, now you're talking. That was, um, see, my dad and I rarely went into a bar. It would be a hot day like this, or more accurately that, yesterday and the day before. And when I went in there with him, it's legal. I know the sign says nobody here, but it's legal to take kids into a bar if they're with a parent and or guardian. So my exactly. dad would, and he would do one beer. My dad drank about five beers a year. And on a real hot day, you found it refreshing, and I would get a brown bottle of Orange Crush. You drink right out of the bottle, and had the little chunks of orange in it. Do you remember those? I don't, Lou, but you know what? Here in Burlington, with this Pokemon craze, it reminds me back of those days of the brown bottle of Orange Crush. These kids are hanging out. They're having fun. They're being completely innocent. And we have uh, Ben Rudolph with us here. He's actually a Pokemon trader. Trainer, not trader. No, don't be a trader. Whatever you do, do not be a trader. Yeah, don't be a trainer. You're, <laughs> wait, a trader. Yeah. He wants to be a Pokemon trainer. All right. Okay, well, Ben could just kind of tell us, he's uh, 17 from Burlington, about how it's kind of bringing him and his friends together in an old-fashioned type of hangout way. Not at a bar, but at a teen outreach or a coffee shop or a no. library. Well, is that what all these people are that are glued to their phones? Uh, yeah, that's the game. Oh, that, that? Oh, all right, that explains that. This happened July 6th, I heard, and now it's a national sensation. Oh, yeah. Everybody's playing it. Well, don't say everybody, because I haven't done it yet. What am I missing? Uh, basically, it's just a way to get out there, explore your community. Um, oh, how many miles do you walk today? I walked about three, four miles today. Hmm. About, yeah. As the game measures their miles. Oh. And what are you guys, trophy hunting? What's going on? Is it like a scavenger hunt? Uh, it's more of like a geocaching type thing. Pokemon spawn randomly. Mm-hmm. And you have to go around and you have to find them and catch them. Who thought of this stuff? How come I didn't? It's been around for years. Actually, it's based on the Google map. Okay. So for instance, we had a Pokemon here this morning when I opened up my store, Rock Fun Music Team Records, in Rowland, Wisconsin, and seen Outreach. What was our name of our Pokemon? He was standing in the alley, and it's called Augmented Reality. It's a little cartoon, man. We do that all the time. We augment reality here. <laughs> We live in it, right, Lou? Yeah, uh, sometimes. So if you go on my Facebook, 
at facebook.com slash pigtail69. You can see our Pokemon in our alley, but what's his name then? Uh, Eevee. But I guess what we will try to say here is these teams are being completely innocent. The media is really exploiting it and bringing the, a criminal type thought into it, making parents paranoid. Criminal? <laughs> Why criminal? Oh. oh, basically they're saying that teenagers are just, it's dangerous because teenagers aren't looking up on their phones. So. They're saying that they're trespassing. I have not seen such a thing. They're lying. I play this all the time. Boy, you don't need a video game to trespass. I mean, people do it all the time. Exactly. You know, like, I don't know how did you say that it's not about the game, it's the player? Yeah. You can't blame the, or you can't blame the game. You have, you have to blame the player. Yeah, yeah, I know. They're saying it's real life dangers and... It's uh, injuries and all that. The mobile game. This is pretty num pretty much number one in the um, in the app store, I guess. Takes you on a scavenger hunt. But it's I you guess know, leading people to armed robbery. Is that is that true? I heard about that. And the only thing that I can say is just don't go out at night alone or not at all. It's, it's... Yeah, it's over here to talk about safety tips. If your child is playing, is like that child, but you know, 17 and younger. Make sure they don't play after curfew. Make sure they are with friends. Make sure they do not trust that. Mm -hmm. And let them have a good time and maybe have a parent as an escort. Uh, we also have, a, because we are an entertainment group, we have Mark I.E. for intensely entertaining here to talk about how he feels the game is actually spreading more peace and love than, you know, criminal thinking. It's more about the fun. Okay. So it's better to spread peace than it is pieces. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. I got you. So stay off other people's yards and lawns. Uh, let's see. Why don't we do that over here? Just give up radio and start talking about Pokemon. Pokemon yeah. Go. In Australia, the cops are giving warnings. People say it's causing trouble. Is that causing trouble around here? Well, our cops seem to be pretty good. They're really... But our, our community is... I'm trying to support all the young ones out, mm -hmm. you know? I'm actually out there with my practitioner, just like the racing girl always says, making sure they're drinking water and not getting dehydrated. And as a local business, my sales have increased because I have so much foot traffic. We're what you call a Pokemon gym, where, you know explain what a Pokemon gym is then? Uh, no. Uh, basically, a Pokemon gym is something where you can uh, battle other players to get control of the gym. Oh, well, I've seen that all the time, including the playground. Right! I was in that. Not was, yeah, that was, yeah, or sometimes it gets the other way, but, yeah. Listen, the um, the idea that in Ottawa, I just found out that the people over there, the Tourism Bureau in Ottawa, Canada, are saying, hey, it's interrupting our sightseeing. People aren't looking at the, at the beauties, they're looking down in their hand and at their phone. What do you well, say to people like that? I find it's a learning tool. I don't play, but all the Pokemon are by landmark. So certain Pokemon, like here in Burlington, one's at the Earth Museum, another one at the Cat Museum, yeah. one here at Rocket Frontier Music, which is an old play tunnel entrance. So I feel that it leads the player or the trainer to the landmark. Oh, okay. And by the way, were you, are you, I am on a Google map. It turned out the guy went by, or girl, I don't know, you know what, that TV camera on top of the car? And um, oh. and I and it turned out when I looked up the address, there I am looking the other way. Are you on a Google map? I am. Oh, yeah. Now, on my Google map, you Google map, Rockets and Music, TM Records and Burlington, you'll see Elvis at my door. Oh, okay. That's yeah, cool. Let's see if I'm still there. No, they took it off. Okay, and what do we got now? Oh, they got... Oh, no, I'm not... I guess in this one, I'm not home. I had my uh, 80, 84 Chevy... Um, 84 Cadillac Seville. Remember the kind that looked like a Rolls? Only... Uh, oh, you better make sure there's no Pokemon in it. No, there wasn't. I um, I poked them out of there. Oh, good. When I sold it. Yeah, here it is over here. No, I'm not in there, but they had me on for a while. Can you find music on that map? Just type in 549 out North Pine Street, Rose, Wisconsin. And tell me if you see a Pokemon or if you see me or oh. Elvis. All right, let's see. Elvis is on here. Elvis who? Elvis Costello? Exactly. Okay, wait. From, he's off from Memphis. 549. North Pine. North Pine. 
Burlington, Wisconsin. Tanya. Next to Evie's a Pokemon in the alley. Okay, let's see. Yeah, here we go. Looks like it's deserted. Oh, there we are, yeah. Oh. Nobody's around. No, there's nobody on the street. Do you see Albus at the door? Hmm. No. Get your satellite view. There's the sci-fi cafe over there. Are they still open? Uh, no. Bummer. Don't you see, uh... Oh, wait. Albus on the door? Looking, looking. 549 Pine. North Pine. North Pine, yeah, North Pine. I'm opposite of the Earth Museum that you're looking at. Across the street. Yeah, and like I said, Albus is at the door, Guns and Roses all over the window. Well, I see a cop riding a parking ticket. Oh, imagine that. Mm, and it looks like it's your car. I don't know. Maybe, I'll go ahead. I'll drive. I told you. I'll, I'll, we haven't got our car for a long time ago. I'll hold. Go yeah, ahead while you move Marcy, it. Marcy, for intensity on our team, wants to spread the piece of love to me a little. <laughs> Tell you about the Pokemon Mall. Okay. You know what? I just think that it's super awesome. All these young kids are getting out there and so enthusiastic about catching these Pokemon. And at the same time, you know, they're getting exercise. And when you say Pokemon, it almost sounds like um, like a Calypso song. You know, like, um, oh, uh, what's that guy's name with our... Um, pick him the, the, the banana with the spider that bit him and all that. Um, what's his name again? Peter Parker, Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something that's close enough. Yeah, I got nailed by a spider last week. Still, really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My total power. Five forty nine, North Pine. No, I don't see Elvis here. I see something kind of faded out. Somebody didn't want him to see what's in your window. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. It is. Check it out. Maybe they changed it. I gotta maybe run. Well, what? you know how they take people's sight Elvis everywhere? Maybe they didn't want to cause a bunch of media ruckus like these Pokemon are around here. Give us your email again. Okay, just like the shop. Rocking Fun Music 1969 at gmail.com. Ah, thank you, kid. And listen, now you keep in touch, all right? All right. And we'll keep in touch. On that Google oh yeah, maybe I'll even ride it. It's a nice day for a ride. Okay, All right. thanks. Yeah, bye bye. <laughs> that was Kid Cal. We did a show on WLIP. Oh gosh, nine years ago. Yeah, it was back when WLIP was still playing good time rock and roll during the day. Now there's still a program, and it's uh, by Terry Havel. Terry's got the longest, as far as years radio program on WLIP, but it's not the longest continuing. That would be the music of the stars. Supper clubs. Supper clubs, and we're talking, I got the, the Gobbler a go, go and they completely redid it. We had Alderman George Manassas here in Kenosha. I wonder if he's related to the guy who reopened the old Gobbler in Johnson Creek. The village board said no gentlemen's clubs like, like the playboy we don't want none of that highfalutin hollywood antics around here well they didn't put it that way but manis has said we put in a 35 ton dance floor with a disco ball better be careful the dance floor is made out of plywood steel and tons of plaster two-story kitchen they put that in where the stage was Thank you, Lou. Say thank you. Thanks, Lou. Thanks, Lou. Thanks, Lou. Ben. They pulled it all on. Ben. Where's Ben? Oh.